game styles, so it fits his profile. I'm really excited to see Handlock uh, seeing some action here. I was expecting actually a little bit more players bringing Handlock to the table. It's still a really strong contender in the current metagame, but the problem is players are bringing Big Game Hunter back to their decks. And yeah. that's one of the issues for, uh, of course, Handlock. Uh, but as you can see, there's at least one new card in the Handlock uh, deck, which is the Antique Healbot, which is, I think, an additional heal for the deck. Because why would you ditch the Farseers? I also find it interesting that Neria chooses to play Soulfire still. Um, most of the new Handlock lists that I've seen have completely ditched the Soulfire in favor of Dark Bomb. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. The strength uh, of that Soulfire had was always that you could play it on the same turn as a Mountain Giant, for example, and um, that's not possible anymore. True. Also, what is interesting, Amaz, I think, didn't anticipate a handlock here because he mulliganed away an equality. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't blame Amaz for that because um, handlock has been. Um, very unpopular in this tournament, and he just expected Maria to just go with the trend and play Agro Warlock as well. Equality definitely one of the most important cards to have in this matchup, so Amas right now cannot be too happy about Mulligan in that right way. There's the Lord Jaraxxus. I really wonder if uh, Neria will use the Malganis in this deck. Um, from what I uh, saw, the Handlock didn't see much information from Goblins vs Gnomes. I've seen most players just add that antique healbot uh, mm -hmm. for additional stability. And the dark bombs. And dark bombs as well. Oh look, there's the part dark bomb. Oh, so he's playing, it seems he's playing in both Soulfire and dark bomb. That's really interesting. Well, maybe he wants to, maybe it's a new clock. Maybe there's a... Maligan, mm, like a Maligan version. <laughs> with, you know, dark bombs and soul fires and just fire away everything you got. Yeah, I doubt it. Recomb Recombinator, yes! That's I'm awesome! It's like the first appearance that Recombinator makes all tournament. And Recombinator is actually a very strong card in Handlock. Um, because it pretty much can heal up a giant full health. It can heal up a giant, it can also give him a taunt uh, with, the same, with the same play, because you can hit a Iron Bark Protector oh, from Druid Arsenal, and also it's great to use it for example, that Twilight Drake that just got inside, uh, that just uh, got Peacekeeper, and also it's great for the Antique Hill Bot, which costs 5 mana and has weak stats, and can be the Recombinator can be used on that to get a 5 drop, which most of the time will be a decent stats, like 4, 6 or 5, 5. We will see if he decides to go for the Recombinator right now. I think it seems like it. it doesn't do that though, because the 1-7 stats on the uh, Twilight Drake are still very, very good to just deal with those 1-1 Silverhand Recruits that are a big danger uh, yeah. because of Quartermaster. You're right, and also it's important to get um, some secure position against that True Silver Champion that uh, Paladin is wielding in one of his hands. So right now we see um, Amas, despite Maligimling away with equality early on, uh, he drew both his equalities already, has the uh, enablers for the equality as well, so whenever we will see big minions hit the board for an area, Amas has the possibility to just clear them away easily. Well, I was just thinking, what is the cost of the uh, demons that are getting spawned from Lord Jaraxxus' hero power? It is actually 6, just like Dread Inferno. Okay, so you can recombinate those two. Yeah, definitely. Recombobulating uh, Dread Infernals, uh, I mean Infernals to get... I mean, most of the time you will not get anything You can get a Sylvanas from that. But yeah, you can get... A Cairn, a Piloted Shredder, I mean Sky yeah. Golem. You can definitely get some good value minions, but uh, most likely it will, they will not have better stats than the Infernal. That's true, but maybe the effect will be better. Lay on hands just to heal two points of health but drawing three cards is really essential here and Amaz is kind of safe here with this kind of hand he has two pyromancers and two equalities so he can just kill anything that hits the table even if Lothap hits the board he st uh, can still clear it with the pyromancer equality because equality cost despite costing seven he has still enough mana to use it along with the pyromancer that's true I wonder so um, 
What is the oh. way here? I, you have to kill the uh, Garden of Kings for sure. You don't have to worry about your life totals because, well, Paladin was, is not a bursty class, I think. He says to heal up the Twilight Drake. Hmm. I don't think that was necessary because how would Paladin deal 5 points of damage anyway? Yeah, and I agree. It was it was not necessary and he could have gone for a different play, for example, just play the Ancient Watcher or just to uh, represent here. a little bit more burst damage maybe if he decides to play how on the Ancient Watcher later on. I think you, you could have lifed up because the life totals aren't really mm. making a big difference here and you have Lord Jarax in your hand already. So you can heal whatever, uh, uh, how, how low you will be, Let it doesn't really matter free. because you always heal with Lord Jaraxxus. And you also want to play the Molten Giant before the Lord Jaraxxus will be played, so you, can, so you have to actually be low to play those Giants. Yeah, that's true, but there was obviously the uh, choice to just not play the Farseer. Or play. maybe he would just want to draw out that, uh, that equality. Yeah, but he could have done it with Ancient Watcher as well. Anyway, we see the equality being played right now. Along with the Pyromancer, he can kind of just, it, l it seems to be kind of a throwaway uh, because he didn't hit a giant with it, but um, it's still very decent because uh, he has, um, he can just throw it away kind of because he has another equality in his hand. Now, probably Amaz will use the Peacekeeper on the multi giant, but little he knows that there's an owl waiting just for that situation. Navy has to be really careful though. He is getting lower and lower. 16 health is not much. Anti Killbot will be able to give him a safety amount of health again. The only thing that matters right now is when he wants to play that Healbot. Do you use the owl here? Well you have still had you still have to keep the owl I for Tyrion. That's true. Because Tyrion is a real threat, so I'm pretty sure that Owl will be kept for that sole purpose of dealing with Tyrion. Yep. You can still use the Defend of Argus to buff the attack of the Giant to 2, which will be enough to deal with most creatures that will Paladin play. Dark Bombs seeing some work here. Yeah, what, what uh, Nairia wants to do here... Oh, Recombo Blazer, now it's the time to play it. Yeah, that's right, because it actually resets the stats of the Molten Giant. Nice! Cannot, uh, there is no other minion that costs 20, so he will always uh, be able to just refresh his Molten Giant. <laughs> Amaz is getting caught by surprise here. <laughs> but yeah, re I love the card. It's really an awesome addition from the GVG expansion. Wonder. One of my favorite cards in the expansion. Yeah, there's a lot of cool tricks uh, to be done with Recombobulator. later. You can, yep. an example, you can use the Recombobulator with Shadow Madness uh, to prevent the minion from going back to the other side of the board afterwards. Yeah, that yeah, it has a, it definitely has a lot of use in um, more than just one class, that's for sure. Mm. Right now, Neria's plan is just keeping the board clear, um, so he can play Jaraxxus on a board that favors him. So he doesn't face the uh, pressure of the opponent. Maybe he plays a recombobulator as well? I don't think so. <laughs> well, maybe that's the case, but I won't... F I'm not sure that would be the case here. I mean, recombobulator in uh, a deck with Bomb Blobber and anti kill boss. That's actually a viable option. Because um, those minions are, have good battle cries but weak stats. But right now we see Lord Jaraxxus is gonna enter the battlefield. Oblivion! And there's only a measly shielded mini bot to face him. So right now it's not looking good for a mask. Anti Killbot will put him back, back up to 30 health. And Shoe Silver will be able to punch through for some damage, or he will just trade the Molten Giant. No, he decides to go for damage. Neria doesn't like the looks of this. Well, but he has the Anti Killbot. He still has Anti Killbot to just heal back up to full health. 
pretty much. He can play Mountain Giant and anti but I think he will go with anti but and then play the Defender of Argus or Shadow Flame and Shadow Flame. He chooses the Shadow Flame to kill every single creature on the board and goes just with 11 damage to face. Yeah, and there's nothing that uh, Amas can do to burst down now Lyria in this situation. Now he can use situation. equality, knife juggler and master for battle, but that's really... Um, that's not a good choice. You're just being threatened by a 6-6 six, six creature every single turn afterwards. Mm, and yeah. you did use one equality. Amas also does have the strong combination of master for battle and quartermaster, but there is another shadow flame. Yeah. Looming in Naria's hand, so Naria has this game firmly under control. That anti kill bot providing the health necessary to survive those crucial turns. Let me I really like the addition of the anti kill bot to the handlock, it just fits the deck perfectly, I think. Yeah, definitely. Warlock was kind of lacking a big heal um, spell, that's not Jaraxxus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anti kill bot fulfills that purpose very well. Hmm. It's a really tough spot for oh, Mars. There's no clear way what should you do this time and well if it, he wants to risk it and play and don't play around Shadow Flame or Hellfire, then he can go with the Master for Battle and Quartermaster, but this is really a tough decision to make. Oh wow, he decides to go full on damage and that's gonna get punished. Well, he's dealing one damage to face, second damage to face, uh, second damage to uh, Molten Giant. Oh, look at this. Threaten I mean, the Inferno is gonna get spawned, I would assume, into the Shadow Flame. Or well, he can just use the Molten Giant. use the Ancient Water for that. It, it has a weaker stat and it doesn't kill the Quartermaster. Yeah, he can buff the Walton Giant, buff the Ancient Watch, and then use the Shadow Flame. Oh, this will be devastating! I don't think there's an easy way out of it. Well, he still has a quality consecration to get some damage, and Naria is out of taunt givers as well, well but uh, there's uh, still Siphon Soul to heal a little bit. I think, well, it's a tough spot. Let you can see. use you you can't use a Consecration of Wild Pyromancer and Bomb Blubber in one turn because that's 11 points of mana. You can risk. You can use Pyro and Equality, and but then you are defenseless against the. 6-6 uh, six, six minions that will be spawning from next turn. So what are we gonna see right here from Amas? Well, Definitely I equality and following it up with a consecration. Pyromancer and hero power will be used after that. I think that's the best choice you can make in this situation. The only one other reasonable choice was to risk with consecration bomb lover to maybe kill off the giant with the 50-50 from the bomb lover. But, well, that was more risky. So Siphon Soul will be able to deal with the Pyromancer. He will drop the DK and Hunter, which will then be... Uh, no, you no, you won't. He's just going for the okay. Colonel. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. And even if Amas top decks a Tyrion here, Naria still has that owl to silence it and punch through for lethal. Four points of damage. Three points of damage from the attack. You have to go face here, right? Yeah, definitely. Just hope that I'm, uh, just hope that Naria doesn't have anything. What can you top deck? He already did use both True Silver Champions, if I believe. Wait a second. Amas is still in this game. He, Naria is one point off lethal. Force and Y. Oh, oh man! There is the Sun Fury Protector. That will give Naria the taunt he needs to protect himself from weapons. Like true silver champion. Yep. So now I think I've got you kill the bomb lover anyway. Is there uh, is there any card that can kill? I don't 
Okay. Yeah, killing the bomb lower is okay because the board that he has right now re still represents lethal. See, there is the Tyrion, but it's not, not enough because the owl, is, the owl is there. And Very well played by Neria. This game was really flawlessly played by him. This was a very close match and that clutch anti-killbot that just saved his ass. Oh man. Area. He kept that all from turn 2 I believe. Yeah. So he was very patient with that one. He knew why, when to use it and how to apply it and he did it to perfection. Naria showing that handlock is still a force to be reckoned with. So far the only player that we've seen play handlock in this tournament yes and uh, yeah I mean I'm happy about it I'm happy that headlock gets some love too uh, and not only that and that we not only see aggressive warlocks in this tournament so awesome. let's see that how far awesome this match. let's see how far this handlock can actually carry the area in this matchup Amas needs to find some solution against it what is the best course of action for Amas here? well Amas still has the priest which kind of struggles against handlock and he has a warrior. So I think he has to go with the warrior. I believe. Yeah, I guess. It's not bad actually. Well, you might get stomped by the Twilight Drakes, uh, which can, which is a really pain in the ass for the um, warrior to deal with, because you have to either use silences that the warrior is lacking usually, uh, or you have to use the executes, which are basically kept for the giants. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll be knowing which classes, which class was uh, chosen by Amaz and its warrior. So we'll be seeing that in a few seconds. They're preparing the, their games, uh, but I I was really excited during the last game. Uh, so many decision making, and well. When you think about the matchups, Paladin should be okay against Handlock, but oh yeah, it was a really close match. So those those equality maybe they were used too quickly. No, I mean the equalities were um, used properly. Um, definitely the right spots to play them. However, Amas did have a very strong early game. To be fair, um, mm -hmm. he did not have those uh, this aggressive start with Knife Juggler into Master for Battle to kind of force out that mass removal early and uh, also to just threaten a big quartermaster play uh, so um, yeah and just didn't work out um, the, uh, for a mass in the early game enough to so because usually you just want to pressure the handlock and then force him to play the molten giants and then equality uh, them away you're absolutely right so we're jumping into the game we're lacking um, the hand of a mass I hope we'll see that early, 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 mm, really soon. I mean, but still, we are we ha we are seeing Neria's hand, and there's the Irrecumbulator, which I'm looking forward to it because I love this card, and we'll, I hope we'll see some wacky actions uh, with this uh, with this minion here. There's also a Mountain Giant, so if Amaz doesn't hold a, an Execute or a big game hunter in his hand, he might be in a pickle here. So let's see what Amas has here. We don't see his hand unfortunately, because he didn't enter the spectator mode. But uh, so far, wor what Warrior wants to do usually is just armoring up and um, hopefully get that armor to a reasonable amount of um, that he can kill off a giant with a shield slam. And, uh, yeah, but the Without Farseer, the the Farseer he is actually very annoying for the warrior because uh, if the warrior does have shield slam, the Farseer will be chipping away at the armor. So right now Amas would need shield block to deal with this giant by using shield slam. You're right. If he has it. Let the pain speak to me. So Amas, please give us give us your hand. We need to know. Looks like uh, this might be an execute turn. Very nice play. But even drawing a card off of the backlight. And right now, oh yeah, there is also the uh, on Neria's side. There is the anti killbot again uh, that will eventually uh, be recombobulated, maybe. But most likely, recombobulator can also just heal up a giant. But now Neria using the iron beak out to silence uh, acolyte just to deny the draw, which is okay. There is not many targets that you want to silence um, in the warrior deck, 
Except for maybe Sylvanas. Yep. I was using the Despite this is, uh, to clear the Farseer way, and um, the Despite can also be used. To, uh, the Death Rattle will clear the Owl, and also any minion that Nerea can play this turn, like a Sludge Belcher or a Lothab. Well, there's the thing, Twilight Drake, which so I think would be the correct play here. Is yeah. Just because it's so hard to deal with for, for a warrior. Yeah, definitely. One execute has been used already, which is like uh, the best way of dealing with this Twilight Rake usually. Uh, Amas might have silenced though. 10 points of health. That's a that is as big as it gets when it comes to Twilight Rake. If Amas has silence here, it's gonna be really good. Oh, it doesn't yep. have it. Doesn't have it, and I think he will use. Uh. I'm not sure what happens here. We're kind of in the blind. I think there are some issues. No, 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 what's happening? Oh no, man, that's... that's not... That's not how it should be done. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> um, that's not sh how should it be done. Uh, I'm kinda left in the blind here. We're not. We are not. Be, we are. The, we didn't get in the consultation in that. Um, yeah, it is. This is the problem that uh, sometimes happens with spectator mode. People are just forgetting to invite um, the casters or I mean the production crew uh, to s uh, spectate the game, uh, so we cannot see the hand. Therefore, a rematch has been ordered because Amas set himself too busy <laughs> and could not be contacted. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they just uh, contacted Naria that he should concede the match so uh, they could remake it so we can see both hands. But this is uh, something that uh, is obviously very annoying for the players. It should not be done, I think. But uh, well, we have to see yeah. um, how would be the. Uh, how it will be the second match. Unfortunately for, for Neria, the match was in his favor um, with this situation when this situation happened. Uh, I hope for the best and uh, that there will be no issues uh, with the second match. Uh, we'll be seeing how will that pan out. Uh, sorry for the confusion guys. Uh, we'll be we'll be joining to the game SAP and I hope there will be no issues with the spectator mode this time and I think there won't be any issues right now yep yeah we the, see both we, we, we see, see both, both players right, right away. now so we're jumping right into the game shall be mine. and yeah we're both fine we are seeing both hands but this time Neria doesn't have a giant in his opening hand, so we'll see how that goes. There's yeah, also that is kind of brutal for Neria, but he still has the life tap to eventually draw into those. Oh man, this hand is really rough. No threats whatsoever for Neria. But this game can still go either way. This will be a long and drawn out match, and uh. Wow, after two life taps, there's still no Mountain Giant or Twilight Drake. There's whatsoever. still a chance to draw into that. Yeah, he needs it on the next draw. Seven points of armor, but no shield. On the other hand, slams. though, Amas also doesn't have any execute or shield slams. What you get. True, true. But, um, well, Nairia has two, uh, two silences in his hand, so it's not so bad. He can, he can use the ancient watcher as a yeti, but I, I think that the master won't let him. Okay, so he didn't finish off the ancient watcher. Yeah, which we can, can, re which yeah. can result in some nasty additional points of damage. 
the bars here really love the Ancient Watcher to prevent the uh, Execute from being played on it. So this board absolutely represents some damage. I mean, he has to pose some threat to the armor of the warrior at some point. If he doesn't have a Twilight Drake or a um, Mountain Giant, then Ancient Watch, uh, Silence Ancient Watcher and Farseer will have to do the job for them. This board is way easier to deal with though than if it was just a Mountain Giant or a Twilight Drake. Question is how will there's no play here? With it? Um, I think you you have to play the rogue biter or is it Sylvanas or Shields Maiden, but Shields Maiden would no be better, much better when you have a Shields Knight in your head already. So Amaz played the Sylvanas. And now the si the second owl will actually be very good here. Um, well, yeah. There's no much. Uh, there's no second target for the owl in the warrior deck. Yeah, there used to be uh, Karen. At, uh, like many people used to play Karen, but now that's gone too. Yeah, Amas and is on a rough spot. Amas doesn't like what he sees there. Explosive ship. Okay, not bad, but also not great. Still okay. Amas is not under under that much pressure. Um, Yet it's not like he's facing down a lot of damage. He can what he can do here is uh, set up a good death bite um, by just playing it right now, attacking the farseer and then finishing off the um, ancient watcher as well as the owl. The following turn, definitely right. go for that play. Well, it's still a tough decision to make. You can try with the bomb blower, or you can just play the rock biter and uh, armor up afterwards. You can kill the farseer and then in the next turn you can kill both the watcher and the owl. But this will uh, mean that you will get 12, 15 points of damage from that three creatures. Yeah. It is rough to take some damage, but at least Amaz has Shield Block and Shield Maiden to replenish his health. Amaz has to make a decision quickly though. The rope is burning. He's gone with the Explosive Sheep though. Oh wow, interesting. I was sure that he would go for the Death here. He's had to go for Fireworks and Death. And um, attacking the first here and Armor Knight. That's uh, something I didn't anticipate. Maybe, maybe it's better? Yeah, maybe he just wants to keep the death bite to set up a Grommash. Because he doesn't have any other enabler for the Grommash just yet. Well, he'll be able to deal with the Ancient Watcher either way, unless it's killed again. That's right. Some few protector thwarting that plan though. Keeping the Ancient Watcher safe from the Fire War Axe. Attack of the Yetis though. So oh. Shield Maiden into Shield, shield Slam into the 5-5-4-5 five, five, five with Taunt into killing the second Ancient Watcher. That Perfect is a great plan play. execution. Yeah, that is a great play and it also puts a threat on the board for Amas. It is kind of painful though to use a Shield Slam for something like an Ancient Watcher that kind of does nothing really. I think that's the correct play here. Yeah, you have to do it because you <laughs> you are facing too much damage right now uh, over time. What now? Yep, this dot in the form of minions is too big of a threat, and you also have to put something to the I on the board it. so it will threaten your opponent. Oh, he's going with the execute. Oh, that is also a nice play, I guess, because. Uh, the Ancient Watcher, the Taunted Up Ancient Watcher, doesn't really do anything right now. So Amas can kill it off with the Shield Maiden instead of using the Shield Slam. The problem is that the Shield Maiden can be easily uh, be rid of with any kind of spell that disposal that that that, um, that the Warlock has, like Siphon Soul, Dark Bomb, in combination with the Sun Fury um, Defender. And that was the case here. So there's still a fa four or five yeti that that can't attack, but it has a taunt. What do you think about playing bomb blobber here and attacking, so you can play Gorehole next turn? I thought that 
could have been. Yeah, it could have been a play, but uh, it's not like a mistake not to do it right now. But at some point, you have to deal with that ancient watcher. And if Amaz plays the Balkan giant here, and what can he do? Also, well. I think, yeah, Molten Giant might be better here, because if he wants to play the Jaraxxus as soon as possible, then he has to play the Molten Giants also as soon as possible, because they, they are not playable afterwards, when you are already in form of Jaraxxus. Yeah, speaking of Jaraxxus, we did see Harrison Jones in Amaz's deck though, right? I if I recall really? correctly. When he, when he, because we actually saw his whole deck uh, when he played against um, Arctota, right? Ah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. And uh, Mars, um, so Naria might know about the Terrison and uh, therefore be hesitant to play this Jaraxxus. Recombiator, which will mean that this is a creature for 12 mana, so it might be a Deathwing. No, Deathwing costs uh, 10, 10 mana. Right. Yeah, it's 10. So. Yeah, he just gets the same thing. Mountain Giant is the only minion for 12 okay. mana. Well, that's sad. I wanted to, do, to uh, <laughs> see some Recombiation. Yeah, Giants are not affected by that, except for Sea Giant. That guy can actually get Deathwing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything for 10 mana other than uh, Sea Giant or Deathwing? I don't mm, think so, right? Nope. Yeah. I don't think so. But it's just. Oh, you can points. actually get Clockwork Giant from Mountain Giant, right? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like the reverse Mountain Giant. Wow, Naria is dropping dangerously low here, all things considered, and uh, Hamas setting up for a potential Gromish lethal. Still, Th there's an ancient key point. Yep, and that is going to be C play right now, and Hamas can not be happy about that. There's a shield slam that is needed. Uh, Amas is at a um, healthy 10 points of armor, which can deal with anything that is dropped from Handlock, including the feared dry uh, giants. Is Amas, the question is now, is Amas gonna pressure the Warlock's health even more with those weapons? Just use the weapons exclusively for attacking the hero? What do you think about him just down? playing Gromash here and going face? That is also a possibility, but then he will definitely lose the Gromash to the Siphon Soul most likely. Maybe, maybe the Game Hunter, but uh, healing is definitely better, I would assume. Place so the Gore Howl. He opts for a different way. Yeah, I mean, the Gore Howl will be able to put another huge chunk of damage onto the Warlock, but. Uh, that Belcher is very important here. Yeah, that Belcher will give crucial protection from the Gromash. But it's funny that um, Amas can't use the Shield Slam as an activator for Gromash because it will kill him <laughs> unless uh, he will use the, uh, his weapon to chop his armor off from, so, uh, for, from some creature. And it, he's actually holding only 4 cards in his hand because Death Spite and uh, the Fear Works are not playable when you have a 7 attack weapon on board. Amas still has plenty of time to just um, kill off the Sludge Belcher slowly. But that might give Naria some crucial turns to be able to get back in this game. Maybe he will play Lord Jaraxxus after all, but he decides to go against oh, that. Plays Lord and that's that. He needs some protection. When, when you are playing, um, when you are playing the Lord Jaraxxus, you have to be sure you cannot be burst down with the Gromash combo. And there's the Gromash combo right in Amaz's hand. So. We might see Brawl here, and then he will kill the remaining taunt. But Neria still has one taunt kill, but he doesn't have really a creature. And the only creature he can taunt up is Beacon Hunter, and that sucks. Okay, there's the Twilight Drake, which is very important here. 
Other life tap. Oh, that is also really good here. But he mountain can't giant. fit both with the taunter. He can play big game hunter and mountain giant. And, and he has to up. play the, the uh, he has to play the taunt giver because he's being threatened by lethal next turn. What do you think about Big Game Hunter into... Oh no, it's mm. not possible because of... Oh, yeah, it's not possible because Mountain Giant will cost... That more mana. Yeah, and you can't play that. Big Game Hunter afterwards. Yeah, you cannot play Big Game Hunter afterwards because you have to target the Mountain Giant. Shields up. Absolutely right. So, all his hopes rely on this one Mountain Giant. <laughs> which Amas cannot... Can can actually deal he, he with, but he will have to use Taskmaster, um, Taskmaster or and execute or, face. or, or armor up. Slam. He actually, he can he can play the Taskmaster and use execute, or he can play the Shield Maiden, use Shield Slam and execute. Hmm. Back to work. Well, he didn't use any Taskmaster yet, so he might be uh, counting on going to a second one just to get it first he needs. Man, that gore hole is just doing work for a mask. Clearing sludge pressure and now also sun fuel protector. Now is that situation. Well, Twilight Drake siphon sold the shield maiden. That's yeah. right, but we see Shield Slam is able to enable the Gromash. And that and is that enough is, damage. That's that's lethal. Yeah, that's lethal. So Amaz is making, I mean, backing uh, up one one. Yeah, Amaz evening out the series one uh, game apiece. So uh, beating the handlock. Unfortunately, we won't see much of the handlock uh, for this series anymore. Um, but yeah, definitely Headlock has been showing a strong performance um, against the Paladin for sure and uh, also had a close game against the Warrior so I'm glad to see Headlock see some action uh, but right now Amas going back to this um, deck which he used to 3-0 in the round of 16 so maybe on the back of his uh, Warrior he will be able to close up the series, who knows? Yeah, who knows, and he banned the Druid which is the natural enemy of Warrior Oh yeah, definitely. Like, what uh, does what does Neria even want to Warrior use? Warrior and against? Paladin. So I think Neria will use the Paladin right now to try to beat uh, to beat uh, the wa uh, Warrior of Amaz. But the problem is, Amaz has still the Priest, and Priest is pretty decent against a Warrior and against Paladin too. I think. Yeah. So it seems that Amaz has good matchups and. Even if he loses this one, his priest can make a comeback uh, because he's favored against both classes of Neria. Yeah, Priest F definitely a class that we also didn't get to see much during this tournament. Only three players decided to bring Priest. Amas was one of those players. Obviously Amas known for his Priest gameplay. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm really hopeful that we will get to see Priest some more in the action. But that would okay. also mean that Amaz would have to lose <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes, that that uh, that's true. Uh, also, guys, there's a giveaway going on on stream on Twitch chat, uh, which is to take part of that giveaway. You have to retweet Kingin's net status, and you will be taking part of a game codes giveaway. I'm not sure which games uh, or Hearthstone packs can be given away, but it's easy. You can just retweet the tweet. And that's it. The the uh, the deadline of the entry to be valid is by the end of today's matches, and the results will be announced tomorrow. So, just join in. It's for free, and you can all get win some games from Kingwin. And we're jumping into the next game. Yeah, Naria is actually choosing to go for the Warrior Mirror matchup, uh, which is interesting. He decides not to go to for the Paladin, and I think it's a smart move because I think Amaz's warrior is very well stacked up against the Paladin. He does play the double explosive shield, if I recall correctly, um, and that is a very good way to deal with um, buffed up um, Silverhand recruits. Like the sliver, uh, like the Master from Band Quartermaster combo can be dealt with by using uh, sheep plus uh, whirlwind effect. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <coughs> 
So right now Naria banking on his warrior to win this mirror matchup. Let's see if it works out for him. Uh, yeah. So both players just armoring up the first couple of turns, playing some armor uh, that get killed and despite just setting up for that one durability that is actually crucial because it can deal with uh, low tap, it can deal with sludge belcher, it can enable own acolytes in the process and um, yeah also just chips away at the armor too. <clears throat> okay we're seeing a mass hand too this time. Amaz does have those bomb lovers that he likes to play. Those are great in the mirror matches because you can get rid of uh, cards like Harris and Jones, like Acolyte of Pain, which are basically a headache in the mirror matches because the, apart from the weapons, you have really no way to answer those creatures. <laughs> this is interesting to note as well. Naria was close, uh, was um, considering playing the Harris and Jones now, but he remembered that Amaz does play the Gorho, and that Gorho played a huge part in, in this last victory. Yeah, exactly. so, and Gorho is also one of the most important cards to have in this matchup, so that's definitely that weapon of choice that Naria wants to get removed with the Harris and Jones. Hmm. So Amaz can... I think he, he should use the Bomb Blubber here. Bomb Blubber into... into... Well, I'm not sure, because he has still the charge on Defratul, but it's kind of useless against a uh, second warrior, apart from the five health minions. And you don't want to... Oh, he's overdrawn. Is he right? Three, six... Yeah, there's gonna be ten cards in Naria's hand, one card is gonna be burned. What's it gonna be? That is the big question. It could be something very important. Uh, we will just... see right ah. in a second that that will be a really important draw. Oh, it's low tap. tap. That is an important minion. It is a big threat. Thankfully, he still has the double sheet rate, which have provide the same body as low tap with, so he will not be running out of threats anytime soon. And we are seeing the Doctor Boom, which yeah. doesn't have. Well, there's no great response to that. Borja will be used to just punch the <laughs> Dr. Boom. Oh man, taking 7 damage in the process. Yeah, but now we'll see the Harrison Jones. That was a perfect bait for the Gore Hole. Oh yeah. That, that is definitely what Neria has been waiting for. And that Harrison Jones will pay off in a big way. Will, the, will we see a thank you here? Oh, uh, no BM. No BM. <laughs> Using the coin just to not overdraw. Well, can he overdraw? Three, six, nine. Yeah, he was. He was at ten cards. Oh yeah, right. You're right. Those bombs, man. They're, they're really, uh, really annoying. Those are the new annoyatrons. So getting rid of the bombs with the plasma and the weapon. To finish oh, off the Harrison with no. the bomb lover. Oh, it's actually really rough that that <laughs> Taskmaster got killed by the second bomb. That that was really crucial. Uh, uh, just a 2 2 body in a mirror match can mean a lot because it just picks up the armor slowly but, st uh, but steadily. Yeah, despite, um, the old, despite like low stat minions uh, seeming irrelevant, they actually provide more advantage than you think. Um, every point of armor does matter because if the game eventually goes to fatigue, this armor is important. I can take the hit. Well, Amaz is in a tough spot. He is on the defensive side of the game, and Nairia has a lot more cards, even with. Well, actually, that, that burned card might not matter at all in this match and Amaz just gave no options <laughs> yeah. for Nairia so we'll see how that will pan out but it doesn't seem good to for Amaz here yeah Amaz, uh, Nairia has the board advantage um, he has better cards in hand and more cards so Amaz needs some 
very good play to like get back in there, but I don't really see much to be fair. So let's see what Neria can do to establish, uh, to, to even further his dominance on the board. Um, he has plenty of options here. Alex Straza doesn't seem like it's uh, value uh, that much value because uh, Amas is already at 19 health. So, uh, but still, it's a big minion on the board, and uh, that's probably the best thing you can get out of Alex Straza anymore. And also, it's important that the later in the game, the less value is Alex Straza, and if you don't play it right now, uh, you will have to wait till the fatigue point when it to actually will be used as a heal. Yeah. I'm just drawing that the collides of pain that were really needed at the start of the game, and he doesn't have a warrior here, and the explosive ship is not on, on his command, so he can't really trigger it whenever he wants to get those uh, those draws from the acolytes of pain. Amaz could still go for that double acolyte of pain, though, um, because he needs something to just damage that um, Alex Straza so he can execute it. Yeah. If Amas goes for the, his own Alexstrasza, it will get, just get blown out by Big Game Hunter here. He has to play, I, I think he has to play both Acolytes of Pain and the Explosive Shield. Yeah, and that's exactly what he does, armoring up as well. And now... Nerea can pretty much just ignore those, I would assume. There's the Shield Slam, and he has the Shields, ma shields Maiden, but there's no target for them. So yeah, I think, I think you just play the Belcher. Well, you can't really ignore those uh, acolytes of pain, but you don't have any weapons to get rid of them so easily. Amaz is at 29 points he of health, but you can deal at least nine points this turn. Shield slamming the acolytes of pain is definitely an option here. Yeah, that wants, he just wants to deny Amaz as many draws as possible. Taskmastering his own um, Armorsmith as well, just to also remove the Acolyte in one shot. Very well done by Nerea here. As we said before in the uh, matches that we have already seen, in the mirror, m mirror matches between Warriors, drawing as much cards as you can from the Archives of Pain most of the time means game for one of the players. Yeah, and right now Amas is in desperate need of decent solutions, therefore denying him the draw is actually really important. But right now the explosive sheep though has a uh, very decent value here, uh, keep being able to kill both the, ex uh, the Taskmaster and the Armorsmith, and also um, ex execute being possible now to kill off yep. the Alexstrasza. And now we will see a follow-up with Dr. Boo. Which can be killed by the big game hunter. So I think we will see a warren, then a big game hunter, and then a slash belcher or shields maiden. Yeah. Definitely what's gonna happen right now. Neria didn't give it a thought. It just seems like an obvious I case here. And he picks shields maiden here just because he has the shield block already in hand. In the case he will draw into shield slams. Oh, Ragnar was being drawn for Amas, though that can turn a game around, potentially. Decides not to go for it. He will most likely just play Alex Straza here. Nope. Wait, why? He plays the okay, it seems like he's more afraid of the shield slam that would kill the Alex Straza. Back to back Ragnaros, and this is really important. Will he hit the second Ragnaros? No, nope, oh, yeah. this face. time it didn't work. We've seen some pretty good Ragnaros for Nyria in the past, if you remember, yep. <laughs> but not this time. But now, well, this is a tough spot for Amaz. He can play Alex Straza, and well, he's forced to hit himself. Yeah, because any weapon plus a Ragnaros hit, and a Ragnaros hit kills him. And Ragnaros did not die this turn, so that was definitely a possibility. So now, Neria will play Shield Block first, I think. Well, he didn't do that. No, okay. he, he wants to save uh, his Ragnaros in case the Amaz's Ragnaros doesn't die again. 
<laughs> what will Ragnaros hit this time? Oh, oh it hits the Alex Charles. Ragnaros eight, eight, but is not still the 8 8 that you wanted to hit. But Ragnaros is still alive. Man. Now you know what you can do. I think a mouse used already both of his shield slams, so he can't really get um, get the, that sludge bulger out of his way easily. I wonder. Hmm. Second shield block. Well, that's not what you were looking for. Oh, oh there it man. is! Double shield block into shield slam. Runner, runner. That was huge. Oh wow. Still <laughs> well Amaz is at twenty-five points of HP. Yeah, right now <laughs> it's looking very good for Amaz. He was His Ragnaros was survived 11. two blasts from Narias Ragnaros. And uh, yeah, somehow, some way, Amaz is back in this game. But oh Sylvanas. So shield block first. If he has a shield slam, Sylvanas now is an execute. No Don't pull up Artosis here. If Ragnaros, <laughs> like, oh man, <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> you put the sheep, right? You have to put the sheep down. This, the, yeah, if 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 you hit the Sylvanas with the Ragnaros, Brawl is a dead draw. You can't use Brawl here because if your Ragnaros will win the battle, then Sylvanas will just snatch it instantly after Brawl. And if you play Gromash to kill off the Belcher, that's that's not what we want. Yeah, you know, when there's Sylvanas in the board. This is really rough. This is really rough for Amas. There's nothing that Amas can do to prevent Gromash uh, to to prevent that um, so Ragnaros will, will be stolen. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He has to play the uh, the sheep, but that's that's all he can do with this kind of draw. Oh. Oh, oh my man. god! This is the only possible scenario where Amaz actually gets to keep his Ragnaros. And that was insane. Well, wow. Now the sheep an enables, execute. but yeah, at least at least Naria has the execute to, fi to finally deal with it. Oh, and that's, a, that's that is an insane game here. <laughs> Holy crap! Those Ragnaros plays. Harrison John, John's useless in this situation. There's no weapon on the board, so it's just a 5 4 body. The bro is just awfully risky, but he doesn't have any way to. Well, he's forced. Harrison into brawl. Yeah, I think so. That's the only way you just can. Just get lucky off. again. <laughs> That's the only way you can win this game. Harrison has to survive this one. And which one will survive it? And it is Gromash! <laughs> and that is gonna be game. Amas only at 13 health. Gromash plus the slime plus fire war X will be enough to finish this game immediately. Ugh, greetings! Oh my goodness. There we are that taking this game. A really close match. Wow. Oh we, man, that was we an had intense some exciting game. Moments. Exciting moments with that Savannah's, with that Bros. So. It, that was a pleasure to watch and commentate. So now Amaz is at the brink of elimination. He will have to use his last resort, which is the priest. priest. But it's not so bad. So he might still pull off two wins with his priest. Because um, usual, before GVG was released, Priest versus Warrior was actually a very decent matchup unless Warrior uses the Gorho, because Gorho is one of those cards that ac can actually matter and can single-handedly uh, push the Warrior matchup in his favor. Yeah, I mean, I've seen um, Amas play a lot of Priest in recent days, and he's used um, Harrison Jones sometimes. Uh, often enough, he used Harrison mm -hmm. Jones in his Priest, so we, we, this, this, might, this might be something that Amas brought to the table once again. Um, if he decides... Um, yeah, I mean, if he has the Harrison Jones in his deck, he can counteract that Gore Hall, that's for sure. Um, but still, then, even then, he has to be careful um, he, about not being too overconfident with the priest, because an Alex Straza surprise burst can just kill him out of nowhere. Of course, yeah. That can happen. Uh, I want to see how will this matchup go, and really depends 
of how is the priest built because that's a that that will be some innovations for sure in the priest. Yeah, we're gonna see some drink mastering. I would assume. Yeah, I think so. One of the best priest cards, if not the best priest card, okay. to be printed in GVG. You forget Involgen? Yeah, but I'm actually considering Shrinkmeister to be a better priest card than Involgen is. Well, you might be right. I was kind of disregarding Involgen in the uh, beginning of GVG. Well, we'll be getting a mass feed in a second, I hope. Uh, but for now, we have to deal just with an area PO. And Amas, please, not again. Oh, Amas, why you do, do this? this? <laughs> why you do this, Amas? <laughs> well, we might, we might just have to see another remake. Uh, no, well, I hope we don't. Now, uh, most of the priests are using double shadow wood paint. This the in this metagame, and those cards are really useful against a warrior, which relies on acolytes of paint being damaged to draw some cards. So, if priests will just destroy the acolytes of paint, n negating the draws from the acolytes, that's a really big headache for the warrior. Maybe they, sh they they just should uh, write an area that he has to spam emotes so Amas actually <laughs> pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> but Amas, Amas would be like, yeah. oh, that area is sad PMing me. <laughs> Let the pain speak to me. Back to work. Well, okay, we will so see what's going on. Okay, we will get a feed from my mouse right now. It is loading. All right, this game, yeah, the, the game is uh, oh, on the one way. Oh, there's a Blinktron. I like it. So there's a uh, Harrison Jones indeed in this deck. At yeah. least Harrison Jones and maybe an Acidic Swampus also. Yeah, and definitely the um, the Harrison Jones and Blinktron combination. Recombobulator, awesome. Yeah, of obviously the Recombobulator along with the Shadow Madness. And the Shadow Madness is just pure value in this situation because you will get to to, to get the draw from the Acolyte of Pain, so you're doing a double job here. You're negating the draw for the warrior and you also get the draw for yourself. Yeah, that is like the best solution to an Acolyte of Pain uh, once it got cast mastered. Warrior will be in a tough spot here. Well, also the blink from um, Purpose might be keeping him and use the gold to just destroy the weapon. Oh man! A Doomhammer Do for the priest! Doomhammer and Arcanite Reaper. Well and there's not even an overload on this Doomhammer. <laughs> <laughs> no, only if, if Amaz would get an easy way of getting a buff for the weapon, but is there a way of doing that? Ooh. I don't think so. Honestly, I just think uh, it doesn't really matter because the Doomhammer represents 16 damage. It's also like one of the. Uh, it's like probably the most powerful um, weapon that you can play um, to, deal this, to, deal, to deal damage. But like. look, Amas didn't opt to attack with the Doomhammer. That's interesting. I guess he thinks that he will need it to uh, clear minions. That's interesting. But that's alright. Also, maybe <laughs> he wants to prevent Harrison Jones from being played. <laughs> Harrison that's, Jones with overdraw, that's crazy. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's do have a kind of nice Harrison Jones if he wants to do that. So, um, Amaz doesn't have the mm. Shadow World Death here, and he can't. He, he didn't have the chance to use the Recombobulator on the Blink Drawn 3000. But he can use no, his one mana short of using the Shrink Meister with the Shadow Wood Pain. So the other option is just to drop the low tab, uh, the Belcher, and 
play. Yeah, the Belcher is... sucks. Belcher dies from the Arcanite Reaper. The Belcher is a fine play here though, because eventually you will have to place something into the Belcher and you, uh, into the Arcanite Reaper or the low tap anyway. So it might as well be a Belcher. Oh, Harrison Jones! Welcome to the party! Yeah, that Harrison Jones will most likely um, be kept in hand until the Gore Hall hits the board. Because Gore Hall is uh, like what puts this matchup into favor for the warrior. Two Fury Warriors. So, this might be a bait for the Harrison Jones, and will a mass file for that? So we will definitely see Shrink Meister plus Shadow World Pain here, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Well, um, unless Amaz has a really devilish plan to draw a second Shrink Meister and then use both and turn that 10 okay, just Amaz to take whatever warrior will play, like Shield Maiden or Sylvanas. Look at this, Amaz actually decides not to wait for the Gore Howl and instead get the immediate value out of uh, Harrison. It is a very decent play because it draws two cards instead of just one from the Gore Howl and um, it is uh, very mana efficient here, he uses up all his mana uh, along with the Shrink Meister and Shadow Word Pain. Very good turn by Amaz, but Gore Howl might end up punishing him. Fortunately for Amaz, Nerea doesn't have it. Well, I would really like to wait for the second uh, second string Meister, but that was a really powerful play, and yeah, you kind of have to do it when you have when you have the option. Killing a five mana creature for just two mana and effects from a decent two three two minion is really okay. So, how is he gonna deal with this Harrison Jones? Is he gonna shield slam, right? it? I think so. Oh, he'll, he will just ignore it. He ignores it. Yeah! Okay. Fault seal, this might be crucial. Oh man, some RNG <laughs> draws right here Ragnars and Death Spite. That thought steal. Pretty sick. The Death Spite is kinda not needed right now when you have a 2 8 weapon on the board. But man, that Ragnaros I might be one of the best draws that, that can uh, a mask get from the Fault Steel. Look at this, Harrison being drawn for Nerea. He can <laughs> now kill the Doomhammer, but he will draw 8 cards off of no that. Time. Is that what he wants to do? That is the well, he, can, he, he has first to drop the cards from his hand, and he can actually easily do this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Nerea just wants to. Get rid of all first. his all the cards in his hand before playing the Harrison Jones. Look at this. If if Amaz would have kept the second Shrinkmeister, he could have gone with Shrinkmeister, Shrinkmeister, and Cabal Shadow Priest on the Sylvanas. <laughs> yeah, but he had to deal with that low yeah, situation. That's true. It wasn't necessary. But now, what do you do? You don't have a silence, and. Mm, That's Maybe a you just power word shield sludge basher. Maybe you so it's power word shield Sylvanas, to Sylvanas so it's not so easily killed. Oh, that's also a possibility. <laughs> but it's better to probably just shield up the sludge basher in this situation. Maybe Amaz is thinking, I should play the Recompilator on my Belcher and get a 5 5 minion. But that doesn't really food. achieve anything. Because well, you don't want to trade for the Sylvanas. Amaz must choose soon. Time He's is getting running out. Roped. Oh shit! On the Belcher. Second recombobulator. And uh, combobulator on the Harrison. I think so. Getting a spectral knight. That's, that's, that's pretty. That's cool. decent. Well. Oh, this is actually a very good minion that Nerea just drew for Amas because he can Shrink Meister it and Cabal Shadow Priest it. That's Sludge Belcher. Mm. What now? Well, I think you have to play the Doctor Boom. You can ignore the board for a while. You have 39 points of health, but you 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 might. I think you might kill the Belcher with the Shield Slam, then kill the. S little slash with your I weapon, wonder. and then just clear 
What, recombobulate her with the Sylvanas? That will, that will, actually that sucks, because then uh, the Sylvanas will get no value at all if you play a big creature afterwards. Uh, so you can't really play Dr. Boom. Sylvanas will get no value at all in that situation if you if you play the Dr. Boom. So I think you are forced to play the Belcher, but the Belcher will be snatched by the Shrimp Mice Super Shadow Boom, which is so painful to watch. I have to go face with that Sylvanas instead. Shadow Madness? Oh man. Wait. Shrinkmeister. Shrinkmeister, the Sylvanas and Shadow Madness, it? Is there any way to. Yeah, he actually can. Holy. No, that's not enough mana. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he can uh, recombobulate the Sylvanas after that. Well, um. Wait. Yeah, he can do this. That's actually, that's actually the best thing you can do. Shrink my so Sylvanas, Shadow Madness it, and then kill the Belcher and play Recombobulate. Yeah, that's like insane a value, insane combo, and I hope Amaz sees it, because that is a game-winning, uh, game-winning play right here. Can even use the Doom Hammer finally to <laughs> just kill the sludge. That is. But, but is he? Maybe Amaz is just sticking to the game plan to keep Doom Hammer for as long as possible, and so the terrorist seems to use this. Okay, so he doesn't use the shrine. That's weird. Oh wow! What is he keeping it for? I wonder. Maybe he just didn't saw the play because that was so damn powerful. Yeah, definitely. You just destroy a creature from opponent. Oh, board. maybe Amas. Uh, I don't know. Amas is kind of. I think he just saw it because he he just dropped his head. In a disbelief. We I don't know. Maybe Amas is just feeling the pressure here. Naria, I mean, is he's about to uh, close out the series potentially? Amas needs this priest deck to perform very at its best right now. Maybe he will do it this turn. I really hope he will do it. Yeah, there's still, uh, there's still there's a chance to do it. That's the same situation, he has a second chance right here. Come on, Amaz, you can do pick, this. Pick up the Shrinkmeister. Amaz, do it. Pick up the Shrinkmeister. Yes, he sees it! That is a game-winning play here. Shadow Madness. Yep. Recombo and you can get a second Sylvanas. It's, it's a turn! turn! Oh, wow. wow! This is insane! That is a huge play and it paid off and I'm pretty sure a master should have played this last turn already. <laughs> yeah, but the outcome was basically the same. But he, he would get an additional attack from the creature last turn. Uh, but still, that's insanely good. Even heals up his whole board with that circle of healing. So now Neria needs a fire draw with a brawl. But still, he can do this. He can pull this off. He can play Harrison Jones, draw five cards into a brawl, and then play a brawl. Oh man! Yeah. First, he has to play. He's the just coin. counting his cards right now. Oh no no no! He, he, he doesn't have to play the coin. Yeah. You, you can play the Harrison Jones and draw into Brawl. He really needs that card right now. I One, call it a pain. Two. Baron Gidden. Three. Big Game Hunter. Four. Armor Smith and last chance. Weirant. No Brawl no for Neria. How many points of damage is that? That's 8, 11, 14, 17, 20 points of damage. Crazy game happening right in front of our eyes. So much good stuff happening with the blink drawn and with the recombobulated. Amas definitely providing some excitement for us and for the viewers. That's true. This game is insanely fun to watch, and I hope the, all the viewers have the same fun as we do. So, dealing with this board by using Holy Nova to finish off damaged minions, keeping some strong minions on the board, giving him a little bit more of a brawl protection if Neria eventually top decks it. Wow. How can Neria 
get back on the horse when you are dealing with, well, just huge amount of creatures. Yeah, there's no way. He needed the brawl right now. He actually needed it like last turn, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. now it's now it's just over. And area didn't get that brawl, and there's no way for for him to deal with all those minions here. They will just threaten lethal, especially with the Dragnaros that amass stall stall from the area's deck. Crazy wow. game. Well, he didn't need that Ragnaros at all, and to be honest, that Doomhammer could have costed him the game too. That was true. That would be kind of unlucky when the Harsangers would actually pull off the brawl from that five cards, and maybe, maybe Nairia could have gone uh, from from that point to win the game, but. That didn't happen, and Amaz pulled a great trick with the Rock Ambulator and Shrinkmeister Cabal Shadow, uh, Shadow Madness combo. So, we'll most likely see the end of the game right here. That's why the point of damage, and yeah, that's the end of the game. What an exciting match! Wow, Amaz taking it with the Priest, some sick plays with the Recombobulator Shadow Madness combo. And Shrinkmeister sure. obviously proving its worth, dealing yeah. with the low tap along with Shadow White Pain, dealing with that Sylvanas along with Recombobulate Shadow Madness. Shrinkmeister MVP, definitely the uh, one of the strongest uh, cards in this set. A very good addition to the Priest. Deck. And the Recombobulator, man. I love this card. It's I love this card too. <laughs> it's insanely good and it, it definitely shines in Priest. Uh, because of the Shadow Madness, because of the Cabal Shadow Priests and all the cards that, had, that Priest had just got... He, he has just a, such a powerful toolbox yeah. to make really great plays and they are not so well obvious to anyone. Like We did see that Amaz actually missed the combo in the turn when he could do this, but uh, he actually got back and saw the right play the next turn and that won him the game. And now it all comes down to this. Neria is going to be taking his Paladin deck. And. Uh, wait, what? No. no, no yeah, Neria what? has to pick Paladin. Yeah, Neria. Yeah, Victory. exactly. Yep. Neria has to pick his Paladin deck. And Amas. Will we'll he able the priest. To, Will he be able to finish the series with this priest for the victory? Look, Neria got an Isira in his Paladin deck. So this might be a mid-range control type of Paladin, but I bet there is a master for battle anyway. Job done. Also what is interesting, Blinktron is an answer to Tyrion too. Like after Tyrion gets Shadow or Death, uh, he just play Blinktron and I don't care about the Ashbringer unless Blinktron will summon a second Ashbringer. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Right now, Amaz is looking to establish some sort of box control, playing the Dark Cultist first. He really wants to get rid of those um, pesky 1-1s one that can get buffed by Quartermaster mm -hmm. potentially. So that's definitely important. And... Uh, yeah... Uh, if, he choose, if he plays the Blade Master... After that Dark Cultist um, as well, like if he can trigger the Death Rattle properly, he will have an insanely big Blade Master, but that can be dealt with by using Equality. Remember guys that there is a contest on Twitter, on Kingin Net Twitter, where you can win games from our sponsor. You, can ju you just have to retweet their tweet about the raffle and that's it. And you will, you have a chance to win a game tomorrow. Or maybe if you want, if you have, a, uh, you have luck. Alright, anyway, uh, Paladin definitely had, with this true silver champion, is able to deal with those mid game threats like Dark Holders or Blade Master very easily. So, um, yeah, Amas does have some time though to um, kind of draw into the solutions he needs. But Paladin at this moment doesn't apply a lot of pressure. We don't see much pressure in Neria's hand. The deck that he chose to play here seems very much like um, a is very that old school second, build. Is that the second true silver champion? Did that just happen? No, no. that is an ogre <laughs> war normal. But also a 4-2 weapon. What we hit? Oh, 
Oh, he hit the right target. He aimed for the hero. <laughs> Yeah, Blink Chun also such a good card just to destroy weapons. True. Cabal Shadow Priest stealing just Let a one run. Yeah, that's uh, the most you can get out of this matchup anyway, most likely. And unless, also, unless Quartermaster sees play. Also, it's important that um, Neria has a weapon that has a 50% chance of actually hitting the 1 1. And he hit the, he hit the right target twice, actually. Yeah. So right now it's kind of a stalemate, uh, both players trading punches effectively. The Blinktron didn't do as much work for Amas uh, as last game, Get, just getting uh, the, the weaker shaman weapon. But still it's very decent just to manage those 1-1s uh, that uh, Paladin is spawning each turn. Oh yeah, definitely. So now um, most likely, well... Naria can wait with the equality combo when there will be more minions, but he has to deal I with the bleeding that. right away. So yeah, he cannot take too much time and hope that Amaz does overextend. Amaz already has plenty of damage on the board as it is. So, this Guardian of Kings, uh, with this Guardian of Kings, Naria hopes to at least be able to kill off one of those minions. And Amas can't really do much against uh, this directly uh, with a Shadow of Death type of spell. He probably doesn't even play Shadow of Death. But uh, he will be able to kill this Guardian of Kings with the use of his minions and his axe. It's double to full steel. No, sorry, that was a draw. Well, still got a decent draw for the full steel. Having a silence. Against Paladin, well, with Tyrion, that's super important too, because you already played the one of your weapon destruction, and you don't have the second one yet. That is true. We might actually um, not see Amas play any silence at all in his priest deck. Mm -hmm. He has so many new cards in his deck. He has the Recombobulators, he has the Shrinkmeisters, he has Light of the Naru, as we see right now. So. Something has to be cut from the and old look movie. again. Recombinator value for the sh for the Belcher, and he gets tiger. a of tiger. <laughs> what an insane combo! Oh man, this tiger will be throwing uppercuts and knees left and right. No, <laughs> now now it's the time to use the pyromancer equality. But still, I think that uh, that Amaz is actually playing too shadow madness. The, this combo is just too good. So equality. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, Shadow Madness along with Recombobulator is definitely an MVP play. Equality, Pyromancer, Seal of Light? Looks like it. Clearing the board very efficiently. Keeping the Pyromancer as well. But when you think about it, that Stranglehold Strangle Tiger was your card. You just killed your own card. Why? Well, that was a Sludge Belcher just a minute ago. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Light of Naru, the three damage to a uh, one one. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it gets it gets light ward because that's how it works. Really? Yeah, because it was damaged after Light of the Naru, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Light of the Naru says uh, when the minion is still damaged after Light of the Naru hits, then. <laughs> well, it was quite dead, so <laughs> you can assume it was damaged. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! So you can you have to actually <laughs> silence the, the the little Undertaker. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this has to be done. Imagine when you have the Light Warden against a Shaman that has a healing totem on board and it just healed like a four, cr four creatures for one and the Light Warden is eight, nine, nine, two. It is interesting to note as well that he chose to silence the um, Light Warden instead of the Orcanized Soul Priest because Orcanized Soul Priest um, was still able to deal damage because of that now. Look, Javelin's Chosen is actually being played and constructed. This yeah, is a polar house in Arena, one of the best cards for the priest there. Yeah, but definitely. Valence Chosen is a very strong card. It can just 
Um, Snowball aborts abort states in favor of the priest so hard um, because priest um, getting that big health minion for the priest is so essential. You can just heal it back up with circle of healing and hero power. And uh, yeah, I mean we've seen obviously like Shadow Ward, uh, I mean Power Ward Shield is obviously very strong to do that. And Valence Chosen in that case giving four health is even better. Yeah, and it does get a spell power which is also very important. Yeah, you can combine it with Holy Nova or Consecrate. Come with Consecrate for <laughs> the priest playing Consecrate, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you always get it. I must consider. Well, it seems rather bad for the we are here. The priest was heavily favored against Warrior and the Paladin. I think like the, that priest with double recombinators and double Shadow Madness is actually heavily favored against any kind of minion heavy deck. I like have I'm to agree with this, to be fair. Um, all I can see uh, beating this priest deck is kind of control oriented, uh, I mean con combo oriented decks. Um, that just do unfair things. For example, Miracle Rogue. Yeah, Miracle Rogue can be an answer to that because there's no value in those uh, recombinators then. This might be one of the best decks in the tournament, actually. Yeah, I mean, Hamas definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to building uh, these, these decks. Um, I'm really, su uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that he came up with such a strong priest deck so quickly after GVG came out because mm -hmm. he played priest a lot. He knows the class inside out and proving once again why priest is such a powerful class in his hands, beating Nerea's.